Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Thank God it is time to read the Bible. We are going to review 1 John chapter 4 today. Through the whole book of 1 John, we can see that John is an elder who is spiritual and full of wisdom. When world culture, philosophy, fashion trend, and politics enter into the church life, they brought difficulties. The way that he dealt with it was very unique, very simple, and very direct. He brought people into the experience and enjoyment of God's attribute. He stood at a high level, dealing with all the issues from God's perspective. He didn't argue about the truth. He didn't deal with all the issues from man's perspective. He brought people directly to God, looking directly into God's attributes. Therefore, in John's letter, he proclaimed God's attributes a lot. God is light. God is love. Light and love are the attributes of God and are the essence of God. When John wrote Gospel Book of John, he emphasized God's grace and God's truth. John 1.14 says Jesus Christ is the word, became flesh and made his dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. Grace and truth are not God's attribute. They are the demonstration and revelation of God's attributes. Love is the attribute of God. When love is demonstrated, it becomes grace. Light is God's attribute. When light is demonstrated, it becomes truth. While men don't know God, God sent his son Jesus Christ to reveal himself as grace and truth before men. Jesus finished his ministry on earth at 90 AD. Then he started his ministry in heaven. His disciple continued his ministry on earth. They established church on earth. After churches were established, God's children gathered together to live church life. As other things mix into the church life, God called his servant apostle John to help church. It is just like the church today. When the non-believers come among us, they have to experience God's grace and truth first. Once they are saved with grace and join the church life, they must go deeper to experience God's love and God's light. That way, our church life will be after God's heart and will become God's testimony. He says in 1 John chapter 1, God is light. Verse 5, God is light, in him there is no darkness. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. As we recognize God is light, and we have fellowship with God in light, we see that we are sinful. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. John tells us that God is light. What comes after that is that we see that we have sin and that we confess our sins and God forgives us our sins and purifies us. Therefore, God is light so that each of us will have a relationship with God. We see in God's light who we are and receive forgiveness and purification through confessing our sins. John talks about God's love in chapter 2. Verse 7, Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This is the command that Jesus gave to them in John 13, that they had to love one another. Continue to verse 10. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. John knew that a church life like this was not easy. Then he went on to talk to the three groups of people in the church, fathers, young men, and dear children. His burden was on the children, because children could be influenced by the trend of the world easily, and therefore could not love one another at the church. He didn't reason a lot to these children. Instead, he simply brought them to the teaching of the anointing. Uh, Verse 27, As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. John was very clear that each person who was saved had the indwelling Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit will bring anointing of the oil. What they really need was not the teaching from the outside, but learn to experience the anointing of the oil on the inside. Then they will learn to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit in their lives so that they will remain in the Lord according to the teaching of the anointing. In chapter 3, John emphasized that brothers and sisters should love one another. Chapter 3, 11. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. God is light. When we are brought before God, the relationship between us and God is the fellowship we have with God in the light. Each of us will learn to purify ourselves. But God is not just a relationship between each of us and God. Moreover, it is also the relationship between the saints. In the whole book, John's burden was to tell the saints at the church to love one another. Dear brothers and sisters, do you notice that Bible doesn't tell us to shine the light on each other? It stresses that we have to love one another. There is a path in the growth of a Christian. We first should see in the light that nothing hinders our fellowship with God. There shouldn't be any hinder so that we can deal with what we owe and our sins in the light. When we gather together, he no longer emphasized light. Instead, he emphasized love. 
Do we only talk about love but not light in our church? From a certain perspective, yes. Will this type of church life go totally out of control? The answer is no, because in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. When the church life is appropriate for saints to grow, the growth of life will then bring light. Light cannot be forced. When mankind experiences love and their lives grow more, naturally they will bring light. Church is a place that the brothers and sisters should love one another. In the whole entire letter, every time he talked about love, the word he used was the Greek word agape. In another word, this love is from God. It is not the love of brothers, which is philos. If you love one another with man's love, because man's love is not pure, very often you will bring the elements of the world into the church. Just like the Ephesian church at the time, they loved Greek philosophy and ideology. Therefore, they brought things that didn't belong to God into the church life. Just like today's church, sometimes we will hear teachings such as, we have to do something besides loving the Lord. All these extra conditions might not be against the Bible, but they still should not have a position in church life. In the church life, all children of God should be able to freely follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and live a church life in their conscience. The command that God gave us was to love one another. Now we continue to chapter 4. On one hand, God asked the children to know the teaching of the anointing through the anointing of the oil so that they can follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. But on the other hand, he also knew that children were immature and did not have enough spiritual experience so they could be influenced by different teachings. Therefore, he turned a little bit in chapter one, or chapter 4, 1-6, to six, telling us that we need to test. When others said that it was the leading of the Spirit, you should test the spirits to see whether they are from God. This is also what God told us, John told us in the Gospel book chapter 15, 26. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. When we talk about the touch of the Spirit and the leading of the Spirit, sometimes it sounds very abstract. But Jesus clearly told us that as the Advocate comes, he will testify about Christ. He will bring Jesus to us. Following the Spirit may sound abstract, but testifying for Christ is very specific. This is why we need four gospel books in the Bible to record Jesus' life and ministry on earth. Only when we learn about Jesus' life and ministry on earth can we tell whether the Spirit is from God. When we are touched by the Spirit, it will bring out an action and a teaching. If the life that you live under is the leading of the Spirit, deviate from Jesus' teaching in the four gospel books, you can be sure that this Spirit is the Spirit of Antichrist. That is, he comes to resist Christ. For example, according to the gospel book, Jesus' ministry on earth was not welcomed by all people. He faced a lot of persecution, but Jesus had never confronted face to face. Instead, he chose to leave. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when Judah went with a large crowd to arrest Jesus, Peter took out his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, coming up, cutting off his ear. Luke chapter 22, verse 50 and 51 records, But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. When the crowd went to arrest him, Jesus healed those who went to arrest him. In today's church life, if we claim that we are led by Holy Spirit, however, we use the way of the world to fight for position in the world, we must be careful. We should examine whether this is out of the spirit of the Antichrist. He often used the name of the Bible and quoted from the Bible to lead us into a series of endless activities. At the end, churches lose themselves in all the activities and can no longer testify for Jesus Christ on earth. We should know that Jesus doesn't need us to fight for him in his kingdom. Instead, when he returns, he will fight together with us. The Apostle John told us that when the Spirit touched us and came to lead us, we should test to see whether the Spirit testifies about Christ and whether it is the Spirit of truth. Because the Spirit brings life and life brings light, and in the light we will will live a life according to the truth. After he gave the warning, John returned back to his burden in verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another. From verse 7 to 12, John uses 13 loves, and in the six verses about loving one another. The love that he uses here, regardless whether it is a noun or verb, are all agape. It is a love from God. It is an unconditional love. It is a love that does not expect for a return. It is an everlasting love. This kind of love is beyond the limitation of time. It never fails. Verse 7 tells us, love one another, for love comes from God. How can the saints have love like this? They must be born of God. We have the agape love at the same time we were born again. This love does not come from learning. This love comes into existence at our holy born again. 
We can see from verse 8 that this love will help us to know God. Verse 9, help us to experience God, because God sent his only son to the world so we can be born again through him. Only when you experience the love of God can you have this holy birth. The manifestation of God's love and reality of God's love are recorded in verse 10. He sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins, just as Romans 5, 7 to 8 tells us. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. If we ask ourselves, we know what we are not, that we are not righteous people. We are not good people. Each one of us is a sinner. While we were the still sinners, God died for us. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. This is the basic experience each one of us who was saved by grace should have. We experience Christ's love on the cross. We experience the love of God who would rather sacrifice his only son. This is the love of atoning sacrifice. Then John encourages us in verse 11. Since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. The love between the saints and the church are all love of atoning sacrifice. Matthew chapter 18 verse 15 tells us, When we deal with a brother or sister who sins at the church, we should go and point out his fault when he is by himself. The purpose is to win your brother over. In another word, when we deal with the relationship between the brothers and the sisters at the church, the main goal is to win over your brothers. John continues to proclaim this in verse 12. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. How do people know that God lives in us? Because each saint has God indwelling in him. The attribute of this indwelling God is love. God's love will influence our soul, especially the emotion part in our soul through the spirit. At the end, it will be demonstrated through our body. People will see a life of love from outside. That way, God's love is made complete in us. Then, from verse 13 to 17, John once more went back to the God Spirit. God gives his spirit so that we can live in him and he in us. Then, we will know and believe in God's love to us. He again pronounced in verse 16, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Our common logic a lot of times are different. As we say, God is love, we will continue to bring out, whoever lives in God lives in love. But John's logic is the opposite. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. Why did John say so? Because when you, ha- when you say you live in God, it is abstract. Very often you don't really know what you're talking about. But when you say live in love, this love is actual and specific and be- can be experienced. When you touch God's love, you will continue to remain in that love. Then you n- know when you live in God. As you live in God, God's love is made complete in you. In another word, uh, God's love goes from your spirit to your soul and at the end, demonstrates in your daily life. John continues to bring out a great proclamation. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Dear brothers and sisters, you should remember this. When Jesus returns and judges in God's house, how can you have confidence on the day of judgment? It is not how much light you have or how many truths you know. It is not how many Bible studies you lead or how many sermons you preach. It is whether God's love is made complete in you. Do you demonstrate God's love in your daily life? John continued to tell us why he had this great proclamation. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Why do you think people fear? When you are in right or wrong, in good or bad, you don't think you are good enough or right enough, then you have fear. But love is perfect. It drives out fear. Church is a place to talk about love instead of right or wrong. It is a place that people bear with each other in love. Of course, John knew that this type of church life is not easy. Therefore, he immediately tells us, We love because God first loved us. In a lot of situations, we feel that we are a lack of love. John tells us the secret. If you think you are having a lack of love in a certain thing, you should first go experience God love in that point. We love because God first loves us. Where we are in a lack of love, we should experience more of God's love. God's love can then surpass our limitations at that point. As you experience God's love this way, you can then love the brothers and sisters who God placed around you. Anyone who loves God must also love their brothers and sisters. This is a command we receive from God. Dear brothers and sisters, when John deals with the difficulties at his church, his answer was very simple. That is, brothers and sisters love one another. This is agape. 
It is love from God. He encouraged each of us to live in God's love. First, allow God's love to fill us up, then let God's love flow from us. In this situation, the church will be full of love with one another. When others come among us, they will say, God is among you. Let us pray together. Lord, we can become children of God. It tells your perfect love to us. Help us to experience your love in our daily life. Help the church I am to become a church in where brothers and sisters would love one another. I pray in Jesus' name.